Hello again, do-it-yourselfers. I'm Terry Peterman, the internet electrician, and welcome to part two of my kitchen renovation electrical modifications here that I had to do for our kitchen here in Chimanus, British Columbia. If you haven't watched part one to this series, it might be a good idea to go back and then you'll get a good idea of what I'm doing here and why. And then uh, you can move on to this one because I'm going to show you now all the electrical is roughed in and I'm ready for drywall. So let's go over here and see what I've done. Starting in this corner, which will be the sink base will be here, coming around the corner to a peninsula across here between here and the living dining area. So starting with this, this is the rough in stub out for my under cabinet lighting. We'll be going with low voltage. I'm not sure if we're gonna do LED tape or puck lights or some kind of bar lights, but we'll figure that out later. But it will be low voltage because that's how I've wired it. This was existing, this was an existing kitchen three wire split receptacle, which I've explained before. And I have a video on that that explains how those kitchen splits were done. And because I didn't touch these, they're grandfathered. So we're allowed to keep these. There's one on either side of the sink. Now, if we were doing this new construction, that would have to be a 20 amp circuit. And it would have to be a GFI on the first one and protecting the second one on either side within one meter of the sink, you have to have GFI protection. But because this is grandfathered, I didn't have to make any changes to that. And I checked with the inspector on that as well. What I did do though, is change from a single gang to a two gang box here, so that I could add a switch for my garburetor or my waste disposal, as we like to call it, or some like to call it waste disposal underneath the sink. So that's gonna be the switch for it. And then the existing split GFI receptacle. Now underneath the kitchen sink cabinet, that's where I'm going to have a handy box. I've got my power feed for the, the waste disposal coming up through the floor. I'm going to have to sleeve that because it will be exposed. So I'll sleeve it with some aluminum flex into a handy box. And then I've got my three wire as per code now running up there to that switch. There'll be a neutral in there. Should never need a neutral unless of course we do some smart home wiring and have that uh, waste disposal on, on a smart device, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. So underneath the kitchen cabinet as well, up high is where I'm gonna put my transformer for my low voltage. So I've got two low voltage feeds going out to the under cabinet locations and a power feed coming in, which is coming from this box, which was also existing. So in here, we have another kitchen split receptacle. This is the old style two wire switch leg drop that runs this light above the kitchen sink here. So I'm going to be changing this so all the pot lighting or LED puck lights that we put in the kitchen will be on one switch with a dimmer around this area. There'll be three more above the pantry in the fridge, three or two, I haven't decided yet. So with this being a switch leg drop now, of course they fed power down on the white wire. And that of course is not allowed anymore. You have to have a neutral in every box. So it comes from that uh, outlet box above here. So what we have is a three wire into that, power carries on and a two wire drop for the switch. So when I make these changes, I'm gonna pull that junction box up into the attic and I'm gonna use this two wire that was a switch leg drop. I'm gonna use it as a power feed now for the under cabinet lighting. As I said, the kitchen split receptacle there existing, so we don't have to change to meet the new code for GFI. Here's one of the stub outs for the under cabinet lighting in low voltage 18.2 wire. Then this is gonna be a, an upper here in the corner, so that's where we'll have under cabinet lighting there, and then it loops in and out of here to the other side of the range. But moving around the corner again, this was a counter plug, existing kitchen split receptacle three wire circuit. So that is being fed from, there's six altogether going to be in here, two in the island, three, four, five. And we added one on this side because the original kitchen design, I think the range was going to be right by the door. And then somewhere along the way, I can tell by the, how they framed this and the range receptacle, it was, had to be moved over. So they must've decided after the fact that we need a kitchen counter here, then the range. So they had a little 16 inch cabinet here. We're going to have one as well. So we added another three wire kitchen split to cross here. That means six, six outlets that are kitchen plugs and three, that's three circuits of 15, two pole, 15 amp, two pole breakers feeding them. 
and then a maximum of two outlets on each one of those circuits. So that completes the six kitchen receptacles. This is a three wire that I, I fished over here from the other location to enter the kitchen. So that'll be a three-way switch network to control the lighting in the main kitchen area before it was only switched from one end. So if you came in from the patio and in the evening, no lights, the closest you could get to a, a light switch for the kitchen was right across the kitchen, which is not good. So it always should have been a three-way network here and it wasn't. This is for the outside patio or the wall sconce for the patio here is what this switch is about. So what I also had to do while I was at it, we added uh, a circuit now the microwave. I had to move that circuit for the microwave that was over in that wall that we tore out. So now it's going to feed. This is just power for the range, the electrical for the gas range. That's a very, very low load. Uh, all it does is really operate the igniter and the clock and whatever what else you have in the in the gas range so feeding that from the microwave circuit a dedicated circuit for a, an overhead range range hood microwave up here I've left this box just sticking out of the wall right now it's going to be an old work box and that the reason for that is that when you put these cabinets in you're come sticking out like an inch and a half from the wall so instead of trying to get this box sitting out perfectly the right depth. I'm just going to cut it into the back of the cabinet and clamp it in with an old work box in the right location because with the, a range hood microwave you drill your hole for your cord to go up into the upper cabinet and it just plugs in up in there. So dedicated circuit for that. Like I mentioned the range receptacle before was a 40 amp uh, four wire circuit here. That's uh, two hots, a neutral and a ground. I was able now to take that circuit pull it up and shoot it out the outside wall and put a weatherproof GFI outdoor panel out there, which is going to feed my hot tub. So I can show you that in, a, in another video where that, that's done and I'll show you when I actually hook up that hot tub. It's not here yet either. So it was kind of nice that I had it because my panel is in the far corner of this house in the front of the garage inside here in Canada, mostly they're inside. Whereas in the southern states, at least, they're usually outside. So that would be a tough fish to get a, an 8 gauge uh, 40 amp circuit, two pole circuit out here for that hot tub. So it was fortunate, switched to gas, and we were able to take that circuit for it. So I think I covered everything in this part of the kitchen. I'm just going to change angles here and show you what we've done on the other wall where the fridge and the pantry goes. And so just to elaborate a little bit on the kitchen receptacles, the NEC, the National Electrical Code in the USA, has been 20 amp circuits in the kitchen for a long time and that they just use two circuits maximum per 20 amp, 20 amp uh, breaker and 12 gauge wire and then of course when the code came in for GFI the uh, counter plugs had to be within a meter of the sink on either side. They have to be ground fault protected and incidentally now arc fault protected as well so you need a combination breaker for those or an arc fault breaker feeding a GFI receptacle and then down feed the second one with the first GFI. So like I said, with uh, not, not messing with these, the kitchen three wire splits were still grandfathered in. And here in Canada now, we also have 20 amp circuit required GFI protection on either side of the sink if you're doing new construction. Last I heard, still allowed to use the kitchen split receptacles away from the sink but uh, most people now just do it all 20 amp and two, two outlets per circuit and they do it the same as the NEC allows. So just to clarify that for anybody watching from the US of A, that's how things work there and things just a little bit different here. Okay, so back onto this side now, right here is where the fridge is gonna be. So we've got a 36 inch, fr inch fridge with an with a ice maker, water dispenser in it. So I put in a, a box here and and plumb that over to under the sink to be fed with a, a angle stop over there. And there's a shutoff valve right behind the fridge as well for the ice maker. That's plumbing stuff. I'm an electrician, but anyway, I do a little of, of both. So here's my fridge circuit. That was easy enough to do because it was further away from the panel. It was over in the wall that no longer exists. So up I pulled it into the attic, actually brought them down through here in the wall, back down, and then over to the fridge. So that's the dedicated circuit for the fridge. Those three wire feeds that were in this wall, 
They also came back and I ran them down through the wall here. I'll take a little picture of that from another angle. Back down underneath the floor and that's where my junction boxes will be to make all the proper connections to get those three two-wire split circuits all connected up. And uh, what else? On the other side of the wall then, so like I said, fridge here, 36 inches and then five feet of pantry. And up above here is where I'm going to have my two or three pot lights to light up the fridge and pantry area. They're going to be switched from over here. And this is also where I added the three-way network then for the rest of the kitchen lights between here and the patio door. So I think that's about it on the other side of the wall. Right here I had to, this was a bedroom at one time and then the, sec, the last renovation that we just changed, this was the dining area. So there was no wall between here, it, only, it ended about here. So right now we had to move that wall back to accommodate the pantry and the fridge being recessed here. So this receptacle used to be in a bedroom or what they had as a dining room. So that would have been on this circuit, there's only about Oh, six devices on it right now, a light and five receptacles. So I was able to fish in through the wall here. I had to cut a little hole in the drywall that we'll patch. We'll be doing lots of, lots of drywall patching. There was only a two wire cable in here, so I was able to add one. No issues with box fill. Now I fed it over to receptacles for the office side or the den or the office. So there's a receptacle there you're looking at the back side of. And another one here. And then I went around the corner and put one up about desk level because I think I'll be having my desk into this little alcove. So I think that's about it for there here. I'll just give you another shot, another angle here to show you where I ran those wires down from the attic into the crawl space. Okay, just a quick cut here showing you where these cables came down from above in the attic. I ran them through this new wall that I've added here. So there's one, two kitchen, three wire circuits. There is also the feed going up. That's going to be for these new lights above the pantry. That's also going up there. And the fridge circuit came down through here, around the corner to the refrigerator. And the other feed is the microwave feed had to go down into the basement. And then we had to splice that in the junction box to run over to the new microwave location. Okay, so here I am in the office den area. This is that little alcove I talked about where my desk I think is gonna go. That's why I put this receptacle up above desk height. I work off a laptop, so it'll be quite convenient I think just to be able to plug in and come and go as I please out of this little office. Take my laptop with me. Then around the corner, of course, are the rest of the receptacles on the wall as required by code. And then the other corner where the other desk will go for Sandy, that, will, that already has its receptacles all installed previously. So that's about it for this video. The next one, any, any interesting things I have along the way that I have to do electrically for this renovation, I'll try to capture on film and make a little video segment on those as part of this. Other than that, the next steps are going to be when I cut in the lighting. I'll be doing all the cutting of the, once I pick my fixtures, I'm going to be cutting the holes appropriately for those and wiring them and bringing the boxes, the junction boxes up into the attic. I'll take the camera up there so that you can just kind of see what goes on up there when you're doing a renovation. And then after that, the finishing steps will be putting in all the devices, of course, after the cabinets are installed, connecting the hot tub when it gets here. So there'll be a few videos in this series. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click that notification bell and that way you'll be notified when I have a new video released. So thanks again for watching. I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician.